Hello and welcome uh, to another Stepping Stone 2 podcast. Um, Trey's the, the main person today because she's the one that mentioned that she'd like to do a podcast around the subject of mental health, uh, which is obviously in vogue now. Prince Harry and William and all the rest <laughs> of the Egypts are talking about it. But we talk about real grassroots coping with mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, etc. Um, and we shouldn't really separate them into categories because it's just not feeling yourself, basically. I don't like giving things labels, but that's what they are, basically, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so in order to, 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 to cope in your own space, um, Trey had mentioned about certain things that she does that helps her to cope, and then she's not a quivering wreck, she's not falling apart, but we have to talk about times when things aren't so good, and, and when she first moved in, which is quite traumatic. Mm, uh, yes, and then when, Yeah, and then when you've, you've already, already experienced and still experienced some trauma, it's doubly difficult. Um, but she's made inroads and she's a lot further on than she was. She's actually made this place her own. Um, and there's many different aspects of that which she'll mention and on in different podcasts. But today, we're going to look at the physicality aspect and how physical activity can help you with some of the conditions I've mentioned and I won't mention again uh, on here. And she is going to talk around the use of weights, walks, all kinds of different kinds of exercise. She's already touched on the artwork and that, but that is on the blog. But she'll probably mention some more again. Still doing that now, aren't you? Yes, um, yeah, definitely. And I know that uh, there's a number of people out there who also do things like that, including one of my old bandmates who does jigsaws and things. And he often likes some of the artwork that you've put yeah, on there. Yeah, he does, yeah. Uh, I know Joe struggles with, uh, with his um, emotional well-being. So we're going to look at the use of exercise equipment uh, to enhance your mood and we're going to talk about the area at the moment that Trey's using, how she does it, how you could do it um, and Trey? Yes, I mean um, I've been doing it for a wee while but once I got moved into my own space instead of living in a room I then started thinking about how I was going to work that uh, space now, at the moment, it's actually an art and crafts and workout room, and I'm open to split it so that I have a room just for uh, exercise. Because for me, it's a focus. When you go into that space, you're focused on what it is you're going to be doing. Because uh, I kind of plan a workout and what I'm going to be doing on that particular day. Uh, so I'm looking to have a space. Look, the loft I'm open to open up to make into a space. Or the attic. Yeah, or the attic, whatever you want to talk, call it. Uh, I use um, uh, dumbbells and also dumbbells that you can put different weights on. And I use a bar and I put, use the same plates to go on that. I have a, a gym ball. Um, I have uh, weighted medicine balls. I have um, resistance bands as well and a stepper. And I also do yoga. So just say as well, uh, just to interject there, um, you don't have to have all these items no, to start to work out. We've just been lucky enough that when we started, well, when we uh, became a charity, we actually looked at the health and well-being aspect, which will still come to the fore at some point in the future. And unfortunately, lockdown, everything else got in the way, and politics as well. Um, but you can use basic items to start your exercise routine. And one of the things that I would suggest if you've got no exercise equipment is to just use basic squats, body weight exercises. Yes, because I do non-equipment uh, exercises as well. The reason, I mean, the reason I have got that kind of equipment is because I gradually got it. I mean, I got my first dumbbells, and I have done a video on that, and then I got like a, a boxing bag, and then, you know, and then I got a bar, so it, and then I got resistant band stuff, so... It did not come at once. It was a gradual um, development of exercise. And I think it, it depends on where you want to start, what what appeals to you really, that's what I would say. Um, when I first started doing it, it was yoga and resistant band work. And then I went into the weights after doing starting doing the work with SS2. Um, so it, there will be some things that will appeal to you more and you go in that direction and you try those things out. 
that it's and also you have to think about what it is you're capable of at this moment in time um not everybody is super fit i mean i've come from a pretty uh, weak physical place physically i was weak so I, I that's why i started with resistance bands and the yoga because it was something i could actually do uh, before I got into the weights and the boxing bag work um, it, and then of course the, the, the work without any equipment like you say squats and I do mini sprints now in, <laughs> in, yeah, my, yeah. in my room and, and stairs that. to do that yeah. as well. uh, because that's endurance and I didn't have the endurance either when I first started so it, it's building up it, it's finding a way to get stronger in a way that's safe, but also doesn't knock your confidence. You can see yourself making those small. Yeah, I mean, on the confidence issue, and I think as well that if someone is, is at rock bottom, um, it's very easy to tell people to, to go to a gym and, you know, work out, it'll make you feel better. But we, we discussed earlier there, you've yeah. also got barriers well before you even get to the gym, because if you look around now, the aesthetics, the, the amounts of narcissism, and it's each to their own, it's entirely up to them. But if you're a, a, um, a person who hasn't got a lot of money, um, you can't afford fancy gear, you can't afford fancy yeah. makeup, you can't have Botox, you can't get your face full of plastic or whatever, you're going to end up going to a gym that's full of people like that. Yeah. And you'll find very few gyms where people don't go in with false eyelashes, six inches of makeup, all the fancy gym gear that you probably can't afford anywhere. So I think this, I think I mentioned this in an earlier video many months ago, even just getting off the sofa and picking up a couple of tins of beans yeah. or something. Yeah, that's how I started. Don't eat them. <laughs> and, you know, get a book or something, just go to the library, you don't have to pay money to, to I don't think you pay money to join the library. Do you? No, you don't. No. Um, or if you're like me and you used to lose books and things and never take them back, then that, that cost you money. <laughs> um, I did eventually, but I used to forget. But just get a book out on, you know, basic exercises yeah. and then with your tin of beans, just go through some of those routines. Yeah. But I think the message for me, and I know this was the case with Trey, is just begin it. Just start. Yes, and, and I think as well, it, it, it's surprising how it, it, it does improve you not just your physical health but your mental health and as you see those small improvements you become more confident and then you'll probably be led into other things i don't like gyms i mean i did go to a gym years ago and it, and it was an all uh, woman woman's only gym and i still didn't really feel comfortable uh, i much prefer to work out in my own space because I can decide on what it is I'm doing. I mean, I keep notes and of what workouts I've done on what days, and I have rest days, and I and I keep notes of how it's affected me. And so it's almost like you're journaling, and that's another thing I'll talk about in another podcast. Um, you keep a notes and you're looking to see how it's affecting you and the benefits or that didn't quite work or that did and and before you know it you've got all kinds of things information down so if we go back a little bit down about the because the, obviously you're well down the the road now and you know if you look at a lot of the videos and if you're working out with weights mm -hmm. and doing deadlifts stuff like that so you know you're, you're way ahead of the game but if we go back to somebody who hasn't started and wants to start yeah, yeah and I, we've been down this road before because I've asked you the same question and I'm not going to ask it again. I'll ask it in a different way. That space we talked about where you begin that journey, what's important about that space? And I know myself, going back to the old uh, martial arts days, going to my dojo, my place of working out, yeah. was my focus. Yeah, it is. So if you're suggesting to someone to begin it, uh, because it's beneficial, which it clearly is, and it has been for you, then what should they do with that space? How should that space be? So they look forward to going into that space to do what it is they've got to do. I mean, it, I think the space has to be planned by <coughs> yourself um, and for the purpose of what it's going to be used for. Uh, and even if it's no equipment or just keep a couple of tins of beans in there, you know when you go in that room, you're going to be doing a workout 
of whatever it is you've decided, maybe you've seen something on YouTube, a simple workout, um, and you're going to do that. Uh, maybe it's just going to be a cardio, but you know when you're going there, that's going to be your space. Yeah, I think, I think the, the one thing I wouldn't suggest you do is to go on to YouTube because you will see a lot of false stuff. Yeah, you people do. People are taking steroids, they're dressed to the nines, they're wearing false eyelashes and false whatever. And they're telling people what they should be doing. Well, probably they've only done an online course to become a personal trainer. Get a book out that's based around solid um, experience. I don't mean the kind of bodybuilding ones, things like that. You know, even something like one of the members of the SES who's got a book about exercise. I know I've got one, yeah. uh, Randolph Fiennes, he did one. These are people who know how to work out. These yeah. are people who know about mind and body. So if, you, if you're going to start, get a book out like that from the library if you can't afford to get videos or whatever or, um, or to go online. Maybe some people can go online. Is, is do that. And just centre on particular exercise. I think Trey mentioned earlier there of what suits you, what fits with you. Yeah, the, the first thing I did, the first two DVDs I ever got years and years ago was one was the yoga, um, and I got myself a, a just cheap yoga mat from Argos and a, a DVD, just a simple DVD, and I still have that set because it's really good. And the other one, and I still got it. It was um, simple exercises with light weights. For the thighs and uh, the shoulders and I still have that and I've had them what 15 years um, and they're very simple easy to follow and I found them really useful and it was always that was what I was going to do you know that was my space and once I watched the vi videos a few times I re remembered it and I didn't need to keep on watching the videos uh, and I got a routine uh, in place and, and, in, and in time, I expanded that routine. So the space, let's go back to the space again, where uh, anyone who's listening now would like to uh, to start to do some exercise to help them with their uh, mental health. Um, what, I mean, I'm a big proponent of Feng Shui. That comes from the, the old karate days, the Japanese. They, they believe very much in the process of, of calmness and entry into that space. Mm -hmm. Minimalistic in that space, yeah. not lots of clutter. Uh, so what, what things would you suggest that they do have in their space? And it could just be a space like part of the back kitchen, yeah. you know, or part of a bedroom or something like that. What, what, should, what do you think people should have there with them that would help to keep them calm, inspire them or whatever? What kind of things would you suggest to put in? Well, one of the things I would suggest not to put in is music. Uh, what because, about a relaxation tip? No, because um, if if anything, I would say it's better to have uh, sounds like bird song. So it's almost like you, you're outside exercising when actually you're indoors because music is distracting and you need to be quite focused on what you're doing. Um, is it all possible when you're not going to get disturbed? If you if you have that opportunity not to be disturbed, if you live living with other people, uh, you know, saying, oh, well, uh, this is my time for workout, not to be disturbed, so that you will be in that space and nobody's going to bother you and you just get on with what you it is you want to do. Um, it's up to you how you want to decorate that room. You maybe have a colour that you like, you find quite calming in that room. That's up to you. Maybe you have pictures up. Uh, I like light in mine. I like to have natural light coming in um, and I like it to be quiet and uh, I like it to be not cluttered. Just the equipment out that I'm going to be using because I've planned it out, I've, you know, this is what I'm doing today, that's what it is. That's it's there already, and then I just get on with it so I can be focused. And I tend to pick the time that's best for me to go in there. Now, for me, it's mornings. Yeah, so if someone says, for instance, is suffering with dep depression, yeah, and mornings uh, are bad for them, or someone with anxiety who can't settle yeah. and tends to get up very early in the morning. Um, do you think that they should should use those kinds of times? Excuse my uh, tummy. Use those kinds. That's fasting. <laughs> um, I didn't fast. I am. Um, <laughs> um, the the um, 
Thank you. <laughs> Each person has a different bio rhythm anyway. Yeah. But if someone isn't so good in the morning, um, is it okay to, to, to work out in the afternoon and vice versa? I think, it's, I think a person needs to choose when it's best for them. Now it could be, I find doing it in the morning is better for me because my head's clearer and also it wakes me up, it gets me ready for the rest of the day. So it's focused exercise and then the rest of the day tends to flow better for me. That's why I do it then. Some people it'll be in the afternoon, the evening, when, maybe that's when they have the, the space. You know, if they have a family, maybe it's only the evening when they have the space, when the kids have gone to bed or in the rooms. And then they can do it then. So it's up to the individual when it's best for them. Yeah, there, there was a book on free exercise, I think, that you, uh, in your early days when you first started working out, that you presented to me. Um, and I, I thought it was really good. It was a chap, I think, who was in prison. Yes. Uh, who uh, adapted a particular exercise routine where yeah. he built what I would think was a really good body. That It, it, it wasn't a steroid body anywhere. And he incorporated... Uh, a lot of exercises, free weight exercises in a small area. Yes, he did. Didn't yeah, he? he did. So even if you've got minimum space, you can still work yeah. out in that minimum space. Yeah. And, you know, again, the message is just begin it. Just yes. start. Yes, just begin it. And also, um, for me, when you start seeing the benefits of how, how that, you know, improves your health, uh, physical health and your mental health, you will feel more um, motivated to do more it could be that you'll start going out for walks or maybe you'll go cycling you know you'll find what it is extra to add on to that that will benefit you even further but for internally i i think having a space um in in your home that is mostly for that if you if you've got that uh, opportunity is is definitely something that's worth looking at if i'd said to you uh, would you uh, advise someone who's got a particular condition, so which I mentioned earlier, to exercise to help that condition, what would you say? Yes, I think um, exercise is beneficial to all kinds of conditions and I was surprised. I started it for physical reasons because I was physically weak. I didn't expect that it would also help my mental strength because the focus required to motivate yourself to get into a routine to do that helps the mental health problem because it gives you that mental strength. I, I think the w one message I would say to people as well is that don't um, don't just begin it for the condition you've got. You've got to want to do yeah. it. You've got to want to, to, to just start something that will take you away from what it is you're dealing with. And you'll find if you just do it without thinking it's going to benefit you, ultimately it will. And you won't even notice it half the time. It'll just suddenly come, oh, I totally enjoyed that workout. Yeah. I feel so much better. If you use an exercise as the, as the only medium to, 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 to uh, improve your condition, then you, you may well end up disappointed. So just go in with, with a clear head and do it. Yes, I mean, I, I mean when I moved in, to this space I have now, um, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I knew I'd have to, you know, uh, share the space for two different things. But I, I worked that room out in that way so that I knew I could go to what I was going to do and work out my workout plans. But then, unfortunately for me, didn't I have an accident? And it knocked me back and I couldn't do what I had planned to do. Um, but I've come back from that. Um, and it, it's... It's adapting all the time. If, if you have a physical uh, illness and, and you're not good at times, well, that's all right, you adapt it. So you do something that you can do until you can get back to what you could do. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that just builds on what I said before. There. Don't buy into this 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 fit head uh, mentality where you've got to constantly work out. It doesn't work no. that way. Your body goes through different phases. It has different biorhythms. You might feel good one week and feel totally crap the following week. Yeah. And it isn't wrong not to work out, you know, unless you're crazy like me, <laughs> you know, where you work out every day. Uh, but that's just me. I've always been that way, and, and I don't mind that. But don't feel as though you have to, because there will be days where it's all too much. Well, yeah, I mean, for me, um, I yeah. actually use housework as a part of a workout. So if I'm doing housework, I don't do another workout mm -hmm. because I put a lot of effort into my housework. It's part of a workout. 
um, and um, I've planned it that way. I know that, right, I'm going to be doing this today, I'm going to have to wash this, do this room, whatever, and I put a lot of effort into it because that's my workout for that day. I don't need to do anything else because it is a focused activity. Um, and, and I think that's, that's something else as well. Incorporate what you would normally do in a, to look after a home and make it into a workout. Yeah, so the physicality aspect we've touched on. Yeah. Um, and just, just to add to that before I carry on, I remember as a wee lad before I went into to, to doing karate early on, um, I used to use uh, almost like not tins, like uh, cartons of things where I would put sand in to make them heavy. Uh, I would use tins, which you mentioned before there. You put water in bottles. Water into bottles. Uh, you, you know, if you haven't got the money to, to get some equipment for now, then, you know, please try those things because yeah. it still works. It's any resistance you can. Um, even, you know, starting to, to, to attempt to do press-ups on the floor if you've only got a small area. Do them on against the wall. Against the wall, yeah. You know, so there's always ways to, to, to adapt it, but... The way it's, it's sold to people now, you have to have everything, you have to be able to go to a gym in order to, and no. it just doesn't, you know, I'm not against gyms because I think, you know, they're not a bad thing for certain people and I've used them in the past before, but I'm not a gym person and Trey said she's not either, uh, but some people like the social aspect, yeah. you know, meet, mates and things, but you have to, and this is something we were always taught by the Japanese, you have to make your physical physicality, sorry, uh, and your mentality yours, and you have to work on that. Yeah. Don't look to other people to, to, to do that for you. You have to be able to be in your own space, pick up some weights, get on the floor and do some push-ups. Don't think, I have to go to the gym, because that's the only way I'm going to be able to work out. It doesn't work that no. way. You know, in order to, to get that mind and body in balance, you have to make it your own. I actually prefer making it your own. I think you can tailor it better for yourself. You actually feel better because you have taken control of it. So that's better for you mentally because you are taking control. I mean, um, quite a lot of the time when I find with mental health, at least for me, is when I'm not able to control a thing and I can't find a way, I can't find a way through. That's really difficult. I'm much I cope better when I can find a way through. So if I have a, uh, something I want to do and I want to do it regular, I have to work it out. You know, I plan it. I take control. Yeah, and of course that, that, that will be something we'll come on to uh, in a later podcast about that the importance of taking control yourself. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about you and not other people. And I think one of the downsides of gyms is that people tend to compete you know, if somebody goes in and somebody's lifting 100 kilograms or 50 kilograms and you're only lifting 10, then that can put a lot of people off, mm. you know, because a lot of people tend to show off as well in gyms. And, of course, you've got the aesthetic where people are dressed up with their eyes and all the fancy gear and the makeup, which I mentioned earlier there, and that can put people off as well. Mm. But if you can make yeah. where you live your space... I mean, I, I knew a chap who's a working lad, Milligan, uh, hello Billy if you're listening um, who was really into fitness as was I and in his workplace he had a, a chin bar yeah. and if you went to see him this is how crazy he was you had to do 20 pull ups before you could talk to him I mean he wasn't a boss but he had, he had an area where he worked Yeah. but he incorporated his fitness into his daily work so if he knocked off uh, for his, his break at, at 10 o'clock he'd be there doing pull up some things, you know, so it, it's it's important that you um, incorporate it in any way you, that it's okay for you, just do something. Yeah. You know, um, they used to, well, I think we've got more outdoor gym spaces now where people can use different equipment, but we haven't got the climate for that. Have no, we, you know? we, we don't, no, we don't, it's we, cold. We don't live in California. <laughs> but we've touched on the physicality, and I'm going to talk about the, uh, the mental side um, and the big, the big baddie in all this, in any mental health uh, condition, is the mind mm. and the thinking. Yeah. Now, the importance of the focus, which we talked about, to go to your space and to do your workout, uh, that will help to quieten the mind. So, how have you done that in this space, Trey? Well, 
I set up my um, gym area, my workout area, and uh, I decide on what it is I'm going to be doing that day, and then I get the equipment out and it's waiting for me. Right, okay, this is what I'm going to do with that, and then I'm going to be doing that, and then I'm going to be doing that. I have the routine in my head and then I totally focus on that. Now if, say for instance, I like to, if I do a bar work, I like to wear gloves to protect my hands. So when I come to do that bar work, I've got my gloves out and I'm looking at the bar, I've got my gloves on right now, am I comfortable, is my feet right, okay, now I can go such and such. It's, it's almost like I'm switching from chatter to quieter focus. Um, I find that really useful um, because if I've had a bad night and, I'm, and my mind's gone, Ten to the dozen. Uh, it's really nice to quiet it down and focus on what it is I'm going to be doing, a routine. I mean, I'm a proponent of that because when we used to work out in the early days, I was introducing you and Nigel to uh, how I work out. It, it was a process that, that I went through. Yeah. And it was a little bit like the, the tea making ceremony that we discussed some time back. Yeah. Where the girls should go and make the tea. Um, not always a geisha girl, but men make it as well. It was a ceremony that that, that that enabled you to just get into into the mindset of I'm doing this and nothing else matters. Yeah, it's a zone. Do you remember I talked about getting in the zone where you walk to the bar? Yeah. Talk me through the process. Well, I, um, I mean, part of the pro my process starts when I actually set my bar up. Because, right, okay, I'm working with this weight. I've decided on this workout. I get the bar out because I don't always keep the right uh, weight on my bar. And I've got my bar there and I make sure it's tightened up. And I'll step away from it and get my gloves on. And then I'm thinking about, right, what is my first move? I need to get my legs right. I, get my, I actually uh, do the, like, get my hands in the right position. And I, I don't actually lift the bar right away. I kind of, like, lean into it. And then I... I just go for it. I don't think any after that. All I'm doing is counting. That process is is invaluable when you've got some kind of mental health disorder. Now, if it's really crucial and you're on medication, quite strong medication, <clears throat> that's not something that I'm going to... Uh, push you into because obviously you're probably under some service or, or, or whatever um, or it might be extremely difficult if you've got some like schizophrenia yeah. um, but but I still think in some way shape or form it is invaluable to be able to quieten the mind not by using relaxation tapes and thinking about balloons floating about <laughs> and all the rest of it and the, the one about the key in the box and the sunlight coming through the curtains or whatever um, this simple process that Trey mentioned there before, mm -hmm. that you will make your own, it might, in your case, be you're going into your space, you've got your items there, you've got your two tins of beans, you're going to set them up and you know what it is you're going to be doing. Yeah. How many reps you're going to be doing, etc. And while you're doing that, it's disabling you from thinking about a lot of things at once. It, I find as well, if it does... Uh, in, in you know, can I filter through? I've seen me go to my bar, and I'm gonna, and then I get these. Now I'll walk away from my bar until that stops, and then I'll go back. I won't pick my weights up if my mind's still chattering. Yeah, I mean, this this isn't meant to be prescriptive because it does take time. Yeah. I mean, we're talking from from the stance of we can do that. You know, we we are able to go to that space. We are able to go through the routine, and then then you know switch on. It may well be in the early weeks that it'll take you quite a while to, mm. to slow that chatter down and be able to get into that zone. But if you keep on doing it, you will ultimately start to quieten the mind. One of the, one of the things I found really useful is counting my reps. And I still do that, even if I do it in my head, I count it. Because the counting stops other things. Yeah. I'm focusing on the count, right? OK, I'm doing the clean, you know, clean and press count one you know and at two and so forth until i get to what i'm doing then now i'm doing the next one start start again and, and count through that i always count through um and I, in my head or if i find it difficult because my mind's chattering i'll speak i'll actually say it because that gets my focus back as well 
Uh, it, it's stopping you from want, thinking about, oh, I've got this to do, that to do, the other to do, oh, is that going to happen, is this going to happen? <laughs> and then you're just, you're just counting. Yeah, I mean, Trey mentioned there, I mean, I, I, I'm a big proponent of this. If you go in to your space to work out and you're distracted by noise or there's another person in the house who's, you know, distracting mm. you or just the fact that they're in the house distracts you, then walk away from that, that area, mm. that space. Get yourself sorted again and then go back into it. Don't yeah. try to just fulfil the workout. It's no good. You have to be in that moment to get the maximum benefit from the workout. You need to be in that zone, do that workout and walk away. I mean, I, I've seen me do a shorter workout if I'm not quite right. It's not wrong. You know, if I've started my workout and I, and I, I don't seem to... Because it affects me physically, but mentally I'm not quite right. I'm not, I don't feel as strong, so I can't do as many reps. Or I can't pick up the weight I expect to be able to weight. Pick so up. with a mental health condition, the, the, there is a risk that people will fall into the trap. Oh, I can't be bothered to do it. No, I, I tend to find that I, I don't do that. I go in, I'll start what I ought to be able to do. And maybe halfway through thinking, right, I don't feel right, but I've done something. And then maybe I'll go back to it the next day or later on in the day. I mean, I, I've seen me do... Um, a slightly different workout later on so maybe I didn't done the weights in the morning and it, it didn't work out for me very well and I couldn't pick up what I wanted to for as many reps as I wanted to so I left it I spent the day doing different things and then before later, later on in the in the day maybe after tea I thought right I, I didn't do that this morning but I just fancy doing something now I maybe do steppers I maybe do a little bit of sprinting I maybe do a bit of yoga it's different from what I plan to do but it's obviously I'm feeling more settled. Yeah, I, 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 and that, that's crucial. That. I think we mentioned about biorhythms earlier there. <clears throat> you really have to work with your body. You've got to work with how you are on any particular yeah. day. And if it means adapting the workout, don't fall in the trap of I need to do 10 reps. Right, I need to do five sets. I need to do, don't fall in that trap. If you only do half of your workout, yeah. Because you don't really feel up to it. And I don't mean you can't be bothered because that's not a good enough no, excuse. It's... But if you know your body well enough, which you will do when you work out on a regular basis, you will know whether or not that is enough. Yeah. So don't feel guilty if you walk out only doing two sets. You've done something. Yes, yeah. And you mentioned that there before. And that will help you immensely with your mental health because it'll have to give you confidence as well. Because if you've achieved something... And you feel better about yourself, there's going to be proof of confidence. Yeah. And one of the things I've noticed as well since moving is um, I'm one of those people I really struggle to sleep because uh, of the, you know, the trauma that keeps me away. So I found by doing a, a, a good stretch routine before I go to bed and flexibility helps me get a little bit more sleep because it's almost like your body has become a bit less tense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do that regularly now at night. So I do my stretching out and um, some flexibility before I go to bed. Now, the, I've, I've read it saying you shouldn't do that, but I find it beneficial for me uh, because it's it's kind of like interrupts that chatter that starts as soon as you yeah. head it's a pillar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're more focused on your body. You mentioned about... Um, uh people saying about not doing certain things or doing certain yeah. things. There was a famous saying, I think, came from, not, not think, I know, came from Bruce Lee. Do you remember what it was about the um, uh, making the work out your own? Oh, I can't remember. It is a few. So you, you read loads of books about he does that, she does that yeah. or whatever. Um, what would you do with all that information that would make it part of you? Well, you take you take what works for you, what you connect to. At least that's what I've done, and you make it into your own and you adapt it. I tend to, um, I do part cardio, part weights now. Sometimes it'll be dumbbells and cardio. Sometimes it's bar work and cardio, and I, and I split it. I'm kind of bouncing from one to the other in between, uh, because that works. I like that. that so you so you, you literally take what's useful. Yes, uh, and you. you and what you about said, the stuff that isn't? You don't need it. I mean, there's things I've tried and I haven't liked it either. It's injured me or it just didn't work for me. I thought, no, well, actually, this works better. You just try different things. 
Yeah, don't, don't, I mean, again, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of, oh, I mean, I've never, never known as many personal trainers who all seem to know better than anybody else. You're the one that knows best. Yeah. It's your body, it's your mind. And if you work out, if you do any kind of workout at all, you will learn if you listen to your body and slow the mind down, you will find out what works for you. You don't need to go to a personal trainer. If you need to go to a personal trainer, you're lazy, basically. I think if you go to if you need to go to personal training, it's because you can't motivate yourself. And the motivation is crucial when mm. you've got some kind of mental health disorder. Yeah, it is. And I'm not dissing anybody who uh, needs a personal trainer, but what I would suggest is that, that you look at that and think, well, actually, what can I do? Yeah. You know, do I actually need this person? Do I need to pay this money every month? I mean, I, I mean, in the future, I will share some of my r routines that I do, my workout routines, but they will be mine. And I'll say, right, this is what works for me. If anything useful, then you, yeah. you'll take it from that. It, it won't be me saying, oh, do this. What I'll be saying is that I do this. Um, it's like diets, you know, I mean, yeah. preach, preach to people about dieting. Uh, you really have to work with your body and see what, what sits right with you. You know, I mean, I know now since I've lost that weight again after taking these steroids, that I know that my body feels better with less yeah. food in it. So therefore I'm not as heavy. Um, and again, you know, this, these diets that people preach, Weight Watchers and flipping Slimming World and that, you're the one that should know how to do it. Yeah, I mean, you do your own route. I mean, my I've learned what what's best for me, um, especially over the last 20 years. You know, breakfast is not great, just like liquids. Main meal is lunchtime because then my body can cope with that food before I go to bed and I have a light tea and I don't, that means I don't have a disturbed night. That's how it works for me and I don't eat again until lunchtime the next day. Uh, fair enough, by the time I get to 11 o'clock I could eat a scabby off, but <laughs> 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 If you can bring some kind of fasting in, I don't yeah. mean big long ones, I tend to do day fast i remember that Stephen he was doing fast as well remember yeah. um I, I think if it feels right for you do it uh but but don't do it obviously if you've got some kind of health condition um like obesity um i mean i i, t I find it quite useful for my condition you know the colitis because mornings aren't good for me i tend to feel most nauseous in the mornings and if i try and eat it tends to i can have a bad reaction so i've i found by leaving it till lunchtime or like a early lunch, about 11, half past 11, it's given my body time to get moving yeah, yeah. And, and stuff and, and I can cope with the food better. Uh, but also I learned that having a big tea was no good. It used to keep me up all night with the pain. So. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people find this breakfast, uh, lunch and tea situation. And the breakfast, breaking the fast, obviously, yeah. you know, comes from going way, way back. People didn't have as much to eat then, you know, so you hadn't got a great deal of food. And when you woke up in the morning, you would have something to, to eat because you, you probably didn't have as much during the day. Yeah. And people were more active then as well. Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, people say now about building muscle where you eat loads of meat. Well, think how long that meat takes to get through your system, you yeah. know. And also about the amount of chemicals in that meat as well. So you've got to learn what sits right with your body. If you want to eat loads of it, it's entirely up to you. But if you work with your body and you listen to it, you'll know what's right to eat and what, what, what's not. Um, and again, we're lucky enough to know that because we've known well, years. Well, yeah, I mean, it, I think if people have a, a condition where food isn't, you know, does affect them, they'll know that anyway, just like I know. I learned what foods affect me. And I've learned that if I don't eat enough at lunchtime, I eat too much at tea time because I'm still really hungry and that makes a bad night. So... I have a bigger lunch and that works better for me. And then I can have a light tea. I don't eat again uh, from like half six right through to, you know, 11, 12 o'clock. That's a lot of hours. Uh, but that, you know, I just have liquids, but that's okay. You know, my body can cope with that. Now, before I got colitis, I could have three meals, four meals a day. And I was still hungry. I'm a burner, you know, I've always been a burner, so... Uh, that went out of the window. When <laughs> so, so how, how would you attach that to mental health then? Um, I was right. It was something that was said about the family on my mum's side. Um, 
and I remember when my uncle died because they all died young and youngish really and somebody said he was like always on like burning and, and like a nervous energy he was very slim now my mum was the same and uh, my gran before she came ill she was you know so it's that kind of nervous energy and um so it makes you hungry because you are literally burning all the time and that's the anxiety that's like the fight or flight um my mum could out eat me you know i'd be i mean she <laughs> she wasn't big and that's because your body's burning that up that is the mental health side uh it's how it affects your body it, it uh it runs it it's all like it's running into the ground. Yeah, but we have said that people eat loads of food. No, if you've got anxiety. No, it, it, it's 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 how. What we're saying is, I think anywhere, uh, if you're anxious all the time, you will tend to imbibe and, yeah. and, and ingest lots of food and drink. Um, if you're depressed, you'll probably end up eating lots of food just for comfort, basically. Yeah. So really, what we're saying here is that that. The emotions are tied in with what you do and what you eat and drink. So it might be that if you're uh, drinking lots of alcohol, for instance, mm -hmm. that's trying to rectify something, or just the fact that you just like lots of alcohol. But if, you, if you've got depression, you're going to end up with more depression, but it's just like a vicious uh, circle, really. If you feel flat, you'll maybe tend to go and raid the fridge. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my body always, um, I will only eat when I feel hungry, believe it or not, I do <laughs> only eat when I feel I hungry, but I do feel hungry a lot, and when, years ago it was even worse when I was younger, um, it was almost like my body just took in food, and then within an hour I wanted it again, because um, I was hungry, and but I would leave it till lunchtime, and then I was really, really hungry, to the point where I used to feel physically sick, um, and so it, it's everybody's bodies react differently to anxiety and I believe my mum was the same and my mum could decimate all packets of biscuits in one go after a main meal so, so are we saying that in, in your own space because this is what we're talking about the yeah. physicality, the mentality uh, it, are, are we saying that you need to be aware of your eating and drinking habits as well as your physical side because there's, there's a simple sum for people who, who um, are overweight and that is to eat less mm -hmm. and do more yeah and that would also be the case if you're struggling with depression and anxiety because you if physically doing more then you'd be mentally more relaxed and you're less inclined to want to eat or yeah. drink more so it's all kind of tied in together, I think, anyway. I tend to find as well, um, sometimes you think you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. So I tend to always try and drink something before I eat. And then you know for, you are actually hungry. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, if you do more and uh, you're a burner, you tend to, uh, your body tends to try oh, to get yeah, you to yeah, eat more. Yeah. So you have to be aware of that as well. But it, it's just, um, I think it's just focus and um, control. You know, you, you tend to find, you know, when your body's hungry um, and not just, I'm eating for the sake of eating. So, on that note of Trace's favourite um, pastime, <laughs> eating, Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we will round this off because we've gone on a little bit longer than I anticipated, although like to think there's a lot of good points in there we are going to come back to a number of these points but we're also going to look at other aspects of uh, trace space such as the garden um, the decor the way it's set out mm -hmm. again going back to Feng Shui um, so just to round off we, we, we've looked at the benefits of physicality we've looked at the benefits of exercise whatever it is for you uh, which well, whatever resources you've got and haven't got there's, there's ways to to get around that um, we touched on the mental side the mental health side where eating too much drinking too much whatever could ultimately affect your existing condition and the two are intertwined and, and Trey mentioned about if you've got anxiety you tend to be quite a burner so mm. you, you maybe eat more um, we've talked about the benefits of fasting where you don't eat as much and you have longer periods between food. 
going back to the physicality we've talked about the importance of just being in that space and making that space yours whatever you put into it we touched on the fact that you may have only ever reduced the amount of space but you can still maximize that um so i'm going to hand back to trey just to round up because it's her actual um podcast is her motivation to tell us just in a in a short few sentences what you would recommend to people based on your experience now in your house to improve their mental health and physical well-being when it comes to exercise yeah yeah, yeah um if you don't have any equipment do free weights exercises squats um use your stairs to do steppers uh, stuff like that uh, leg raises uh, you know wander up and run up and down your, your living room if you've got a living room you know use your your bar top to do um press-ups press ups. yeah you know so there is ways around that um until you can either you can or use tins of beans for weights until you've see if you want to do something else fill bottles of milk with water and lift those, you know, and move those around. So, and you can do it sitting down as well as standing up. So if if you don't want to, if you can't move around very much, start sitting down. But but start something because I think uh, physically and mentally it is beneficial, and you will see improvements. Um, and it makes your space more yours and more enjoyable as well. Yeah, and I think in this instance we we we. We're not trying to separate the physicality from the mentality because the two are intertwined. Yes, they are. You know, you can't work with one without the other. Um, and, I, and I must stress that because too many people who have existing conditions that we mentioned earlier uh, are only worked on in one area, and that's the mental health side, whether it be yeah. cancer or whatever. Uh, or they take it to the extreme where they're all going over fells and that because it's good for them, basically. Uh, the two are intertwined. And you can't have one without the other, you have to work them both. So if you're going to do physical work, it will ultimately bring in yeah. the aspect of your mental health. So just always remember that. And what Trey said before, I, I second, whatever you do, just begin it. Yes, and um, you'll find you'll actually, I found, and it was, I, you'll enjoy it. But it makes that space, even if you've got a little space, uh, that you do go to all the time to do your exercise. It it makes it a, an enjoyable space. You walk in and you get the benefits mentally as you walk in. Definitely, I'd second that. Yeah, just make that space. Yes, definitely. So is that a wrap? That's a wrap. Thank you very much. We'll be back soon. Let's go.